Hi, I'm Steve Rose. I've been a chef for 38 years, was the owner of the greenest restaurant in the entire San Francisco Bay Area, and now I'm a farmer here at Rose Ranch. We do things green around here. What sets me apart is that green is not just a buzzword like a lot of people use. Green is an operative word and it really is easy to do. I'm going to share with you my secrets on how to do this at home. We're going to have fun and living green, living truly green is really a blast. I believe that people want to learn how to live this way, they just don't know how to go about it. And that's the whole purpose of the show, is to teach people how to do it. I'm going to show you the way, show you the pathway to green living. Welcome to the Organic Rose. Thanks to my buddy Jeannie, I've got a great surprise for you today. Follow me. I love trains. Everybody loves trains. Tell me about the Smart Train. Well, the Smart Train is the newest addition to the Bay Area's transit network. It's a 43-mile system. It starts in northern Santa Rosa and makes its way all the way down to downtown San Rafael. We've got 10 stops in between, including stops in Cotati, Ronert Park, Petaluma, we're really excited that this train is up and rolling and we're seeing a lot of enthusiasm around it right now. How do I go about this? I go, I go and I park my car in Santa Rosa and then I just get on the train? Mm -hmm. Well, you can do a number of things. You can ride your bike because the train holds bikes oh, on board. Nice. We have bicycle parking at the station. So however you get there, we ask that you get there and you try and do it in an environmentally friendly way. Then once you get to the station, you can board our trains using the Clipper card. And that's perfect because it allows you to transfer to other Bay Area transit systems seamlessly. So it makes for a very smooth commute. So I can actually commute on the train mm -hmm. to San Rafael and then I would go ahead and get on BART at some point, go on, to, go on the ferry and then get on BART. I mean, this Clipper card's gonna work for everything? The Clipper card works through all transit systems in the Bay Area. So smooth, seamless, easy to go. What's the individual? If I just I want to go on the train for one ride, what does it cost? It really depends on where you start and where you want to go. It's a zone-based fare system, okay. so it depends on the number of zones that you travel in. But it's all clippers, so it's very easy. You just tag on and then tag off when you leave the train. Taking transit is a stress-free way to commute, and it enhances your quality of life. You can sit back, do some work, or read the paper, do whatever you need to do before you start your busy day at work. And on the way home, you can have a glass of wine or yes. a beer from our concessionaire and let us do the driving for you. It really is a way to go. Who's, who's actually, you were telling me the other day that, that you have this group that's working the concessions. Tell us about that a little bit. Right, it's a, it's a nonprofit group called Becoming Independent and it helps prepare people with disabilities to enter the workforce. So we're really happy to partner with them and we hope you'll support them at our concession stand too. What a great concept, that's mm -hmm. a, just a great idea. All you have to do is be on the train when you see it zipping by the cars on 101, the Novato Narrows in that area where it gets really congested and you just whiz on by at 79 miles an hour. So it really is an excellent transportation option. So you're sipping on your coffee, chewing on a croissant and going, <laughs> see ya. Yeah, and it's about really doing the environmentally conscious thing because trains move people, not more cars. We're about moving people, getting you where you need to go on time every time. It, it's different than taking the bus, for example, because the buses are caught in the same congestion as cars, but trains have their own dedicated right of way and off they go. How successful has it been so far? Very successful. We're getting excellent feedback and we're so pleased to be the new service for the North Bay. How many people will the train move per, mm -hmm. per hour, let's say? Well, to give you an idea, one of these trains, two car train, mm -hmm. holds about 300 people. And every 15 minutes in each direction, you'll see a train. So on weekdays, that's about 34 trips. And on the weekends, about 10 trips. What did it take to create this entire infrastructure? Well, amazingly, we were able to create the smart train infrastructure in about five years. And that is very quick for a rail transit system. There's 43 miles of trackage here that had to be completely replaced. And so we replaced the track with continuously welded rail. So what that means is you don't have the clickety clack when you go over the rails. It's nice and smooth. And these vehicles are DMU units, tier four diesel, which means they're the cleanest, greenest diesel trains out there. They're light, they're fast, they're smooth. 
And so we're really pleased with what we've been able to accomplish in just five years. Tell me about the rail center, because mm -hmm. this is an incredible building. It's huge. There's a big crane over there. We've got some trains inside here being serviced. Mm -hmm. What's all in here? So this is our rail operations center, and it's really where all our trains start the day off in the morning, and all our trains will come home to at night. It's where they get serviced. You can see behind me that we have a huge transportation bay here where our mechanics can actually get underneath the train, check them out, make sure everything is in working order and working just fine. And we also have a train wash that keeps the trains clean. It allows us to service the inside of the trains. Anything that should come up, we take care of right here. Jeannie, the train is so successful right now and it's, mm -hmm. doing, it's doing an awesome job of moving people. What do you see in the future? Well, right now we're focused on completing the Larkspur extension. So much energy around that. Construction is off and running and that Larkspur extension from San Rafael to Larkspur should be completed in 2018. Then it's up north and so we are working on Healdsburg, Windsor and Cloverdale. At the end of the day, SMART will have a 70 mile system from Cloverdale all the way to Larkspur. Wow, that's exciting. Yep, and the other thing we have the ability to do is to expand this into a three car train depending on our capacity. So we ordered four more train cars that should be making their way here to the North Bay real soon. Here we are on board. What a beautiful train this right, is. Right, so let me walk you through it. it like okay. I told you, it's we call it retro cool because you can tell the seats have that multicolored two-tone feel. The grab bars are right here. You don't have to reach over into someone when you oh, hold nice. on. The train. It's <laughs> wonderful. So each of the seats here have outlets. So no matter where you sit on this train, you can plug in. And then you'll wow. see here we've got lots of space for luggage, for people who are going to the airport or maybe taking the ferry. And you've got tabletops here so you can sit down, maybe do some work or even have something to eat or drink. So How cool is that? Each car has either a beverage car area or a restroom. So the two car trains have both. So you'll be able to pick up something to eat and then we do have restroom facilities that are fully ADA compliant. So in other words, one train car has a snack bar con food concession. Right. And the other one has the restroom. Right. Is there such a word as hugely? Because this train car is hugely spacious. I know. It it's really wonderful. Is. And it's really about being ADA compliant, you know, going over and beyond so all of our passengers have an excellent experience. So fully air conditioned, free Wi Fi. There's room for 24 bikes on each two car train. Wow. You can either use these tie downs if you have a larger bike, or there's some bike hooks that I'll show you in a minute up there. Excellent. Look at all the space up here. And the big windows allow people to really sit back and enjoy the view. Nice, big, spacious, tinted windows. And I have to say, when you're, you're going through Marin and Sonoma mm -hmm. County, some of the most beautiful places, it's just lovely. It's really lovely. These are so comfortable. I know, they are. And each of the seats, I don't know if you can see it, they have trays here where you can pull back. Oh, something I can play with. Right. So. That's just like being on an airplane. Sort of, right? It's a combination of that kind of comfort, yeah. space, and all of that, so it's really a state-of-the-art train. It really is. It is. So right here are those bike racks I was telling you about. They're bike hooks. There are two there, one here, another one here, another two there. So you can actually park your bike here, and it's right near the door so you can get on and off really quickly and smoothly. That's pretty neat. I'm going to give you just a quick look at the operator's cab. Now this is something that people normally don't see because of course when the train is moving the doors are secured but since we're not in a moving train let's take a quick peek. Awesome. So this is the conductor's chair in the area where the train is operated. Now our two car trains will have two operator we call them engineer conductors and this is where they drive or operate the train as we say. Wow I mean for this big of a of a vehicle there's not a whole bunch a whole bunch of controls. Is it mostly because it's computer operated? Yeah, it's a, it's a very sophisticated system. Um, we talked a little bit about positive train control. Right, right. And positive train control is able to detect if the train is going even two miles over the speed limit, then there's an audible warning here in the cab. And if the train isn't brought down in speed, then it will safely bring itself to a stop. Um, and that prevents any 
collisions or anything that are speed right. related, or even if, say, the operator um, has a medical emergency, some sort of health issue, right? It's not able to to stop the train. It will stop safely. That's amazing. This is just state of the art. I feel so lucky to be in here because the average person is not going to get a chance to come in through this secure door, right? For right. obvious reasons, but exactly. So it's just a quick look, a sneak peek. Thank you for visiting with us. Thank you so much. I'm in downtown Santa Rosa and I'm getting ready to go on the brand new smart train. Imagine this is how people used to travel all the time on the train. Point A to point B to point C. And we're doing it in the most ultra modern way possible. And it is so comfortable. No bumps in the road. It's just so super smooth and it's the way to go. Look, there's a good there goes one over there. There's the northbound. Oh. So it's pretty obvious to me. I mean look at that. The train is full. Every seat is occupied, the tables, you can sit at a table. Open up your laptop, have something to eat, have something to drink. I mean, this is the way to go. You're looking out onto the wetlands over there. All these different shorebirds are just flying around and, and this or traffic, huh? This is the way to go. Everybody's happy, they're all, everybody's visiting, they're having a great time. This gentleman behind me, he just climbed on with his bicycle. And he took his bike from work to the train, hangs his bike up here, and then he rides the rest of the train and then gets off three quarters of a mile on his bicycle and he's back home. The train has everything. You're standing right over here next to the snack bar. They've got pastries and cookies and some little snacks and chips and they've got some small sandwiches and they've got beer. They serve wine, uh, hot chocolate, coffee, tea, I mean, whatever you want. The bathrooms on the train are huge. Just like huge. They're all handicap accessible as is the entire train. And it's just, it is just the way to travel. I just, I love it, I tell you. I am so sold on this whole concept. It's the way to go, and I'm loving it. This is my way to travel. Can you be sipping on the Sauvignon Blanc in your car in traffic? I think not. I am, because I'm smart. have to tag off with my clipper card. I got to tell you, this is the most amazing experience. Thank you so much, Smart Train. And it was just incredible seeing this beautiful scenery on a, such a comfortable train, having a glass of Sauvignon Blanc without a care in the world. This for sure is the way to travel. I encourage you to do it, enjoy. We're here at Stone Edge Vineyard and Farms and we are gonna learn everything there is to know about hydrogen from my buddy Craig. We're here today at Stone Edge Farms in Sonoma, California. My buddy Craig here, who's a general contractor on the microgrid project that they're working here. Tell me about the microgrid project and what is it? Um, what we're doing is we're building a microgrid on a 16-acre campus here in Sonoma. Um, 16 acres, 16 buildings, um, seven incoming utility service meters. 
And what we've done is we connected all those service meters together inside the uh, fence. And uh, using solar as our primary generator, we've installed seven batteries wow. uh, that solar charge the batteries. And then the batteries operate uh, all of our buildings and pumps and everything uh, on a 24 hour basis. Um, we're currently able to island. Uh, we actually built a utility grade service entry so we could export energy to the grid. So today, oh, you're probably aware today, um, they've asked uh, us in Northern California to shut our air conditioners off because there's not enough generation. Well, here's the rub. There's no current policy to allow us to export energy, but we could actually export 500 kW of energy today for six hours to help offset that problem. So 500 kW, what would that power? Um, that would power all the homes around us for about a mile in wow. radius. So it's quite a bit. That is a lot. And all that's solar generated? Solar generated and then the solar energy stored in battery. And how does that affect what we have parked behind us? Well, um, behind us is a, a Toyota Mirai. Uh, this is cars of 2016. It's a hydrogen powered uh, vehicle. Uh, it's really an electric car with a hydrogen fuel cell installed in it. Um, so here at Stone Edge Farm, we actually use our solar energy to crack water um, and break it up into hydrogen and oxygen. We use the hydrogen, um, compress it, and we, we can run the car on it. So we're making hydrogen, our fuel, from the sun. Interesting. What kind of mileage do you get from the hydrogen? Um, 70 miles per kilogram. A uh, kilogram is almost exactly a, ga a gallon of gas equivalent. So that's pretty good. Yes. So what, would, what is the cost as far as purchasing the hydrogen to fuel a vehicle like this? Okay, uh, right now it's uh, kind of pricey. Um, and the reason for that is um, scale. There's not enough cars. Uh, on the road to drive the production of hydrogen up, drive the cost down. So currently it's $16.54, but when you buy a, a, a Mirai or a Clarity, the Honda, um, you get a fuel card with three years worth of uh, fuel on it. No matter how much you use? No matter how much you use. And uh, one of the things about hydrogen is if you think about producing hydrogen from the sun, uh, the cost of the hydrogen is going to go down at scale and even approach zero. So it's inversely proportional to the fossil fuel um, projection. You know, the more fuel, uh, 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 gasoline we pump out of the ground, the less there is, the higher the value. In the case of, of hydrogen, the more we make, <coughs> the cheaper it becomes. Interesting. I've heard rumors that hydrogen vehicles are not safe. Is that true? No. Uh, let me give you a comparison, just to compare and contrast. Um, you get into an accident with a gasoline-fueled car, uh, the gasoline runs out on the ground, it's a fluid, sits there waiting for an ignition source. In the case of a hydrogen car, if you, if you puncture the tank, hydrogen is 14 times lighter than air. So it goes vertical at 45 miles an hour. It's not going to be there very long. Wow. It's, it's going to leave and be gone. Um, it actually reads in the first response manual, clear the area and wait. Because if there is a fire, it's going to be very short lived. Um, just simply due to the properties of the fuel. Is hydrogen flammable? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, but it actually um, is, uh, has to mix with air to be flammable. So uh, if there's no ignition source, when it reaches the appropriate concentration, um, it's not going to light. And then it'll, if it keeps uh, dispersing with the air, it becomes too dispersed to ignite. So there's actually safety on both sides of that. It takes a very finite range for it to burn. Tell me about the intricacies of a fuel cell vehicle. Well, I know you uh, drive an electric vehicle, so basically uh, the, the Mirai is an electric vehicle. Uh, so it has a battery, an electric motor that drives the wheels. And then on top of that is a hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, it actually sits under the driver's seat. And uh, the hydrogen fuel cell supplies electricity, uh, DC electricity, to both the battery and the drive wheels um, via the converter. So uh, if you're idling, you're typically running from the battery. Um, if you step on the gas to get on the freeway, you're going to be running on both battery and fuel cell. And then as you're at cruise speeds, um, the fuel cell will be charging the battery up. It also has regenerative braking, just like your car. Okay. Uh, and then we have uh, what we call the e-brake, which is a, a, a handle you can move, for instance, going downhill, which puts the car in a continuous uh, regenerative mode. Um, and you can just watch the battery charge on the symbol. 
So it's downshifting basically a little bit? Yeah, it's putting a, a, a resistance. It's, it's uh, turning the wheels uh, into generators to produce electricity. Tell me a little bit more about the fuel cell. How is it filled up? Do you stick a nozzle in it out of it? And how long does it take to fill up? Okay, well, uh, let's talk about the fuel cell first. Uh, the fuel cell is actually a series of plates. And um, in the fuel cell, what we're doing is we're taking hydrogen and oxygen, which is coming in through the front of the car. And actually, the car has two scoops on it okay. that collect air as it's driving. Uh, and the air and the hydrogen are placed, in, in, when they're placed together, they want to attach to each other. And when they do, they release an electric charge, which is DC electricity. So out of the cell are two wires, a positive and a negative, and that's what goes to the battery um, to charge huh. the battery. What is the lifespan of a fuel cell? Um, they're basically almost infinite uh, from this perspective. Uh, they, we were talking about this somewhat earlier, but you can actually take those plates apart. Um, what happens is there's a membrane, the membrane mm -hmm. and, the, and the anode and the cathode in there, um, which are the, where the electricity connects, can deteriorate. You replace that filament, replace the anode and cathode, and put the sandwich back together, you're up and running again. Huh. So, it, 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 you know, they're made out of plastic, a high, high polymer plastic. So they can last forever. What we're going to do is demonstrate the fueling procedure um, for filling the car. Uh, and this is what's called the H35 protocol for fueling. There's H35 and an H70. Okay. Um, so uh, we've already got the car prepared to receive the hydrogen. I'm going to remove the fueling filling hose from the cabinet. I stick it on the nozzle. Lock it in, Lock place, in place, and then I'm ready to fill. In the case of um, this system, uh, it, it, it's not uh, it's not automated. So, because this is a home fueling unit for somewhere like Stone Edge Farm, it is manual. So, all I do is push down on the fill toggle. Okay. And you can hear the gas yep. transferring into the car. Now, why did the noise stop? It's pretty simple. This system fills by a pressure gradient. The pressure in the system here has to be higher than the pressure in the car in order to fill it. Well, the car is full at the moment, or almost full. So what happened is as soon as I pressed the handle, it equalized the pressure between this tank and that tank, and no hydrogen flows anymore. So if the car were empty, we would stand here and keep doing this. It takes about three to five minutes to fill, it to up fill the car. Tank. And then um, when you're done, um, you have to release the pressure in the hose. You don't want to leave the pressure in the hose because it would deteriorate the hose. Very expensive hosing. So I'm going to make a kind of a loud noise so don't jump. <laughs> <laughs> so what did I do? I just vented the hydrogen out of the hose between the car and here. There's a check valve in here that keeps the car from sending more gas out. So did it, so did the gas now go out into the atmosphere or back into the tank? The hydrogen went into the atmosphere. And, it, and right now it's probably about three miles away from us vertical because it goes vertical so fast at 45 miles an hour. <laughs> so um, the uh, venting is a common practice. It takes place at the commercial station too. Only that's all automated. So you simply push a button, put, uh, put the handle on, and it fills the car for you and then tells you you're done. Is that a newer system than this then? No, it's just a, there's a series one through five okay. of these. So this is, this is more likely what you would see for a home fueling system. Yeah, I would think and, so. And uh, because it could fit uh, you know, in, alongside your driveway or something. Right. And um, it's, a, it's a, a less expensive system than the bigger one. It can support um, up to three cars, um, depending on their driving habits. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes uh, four kilograms of hydrogen a day, and it stores eight uh, kilograms of hydrogen. Wow, that's quite a bit. Right, and the car holds a total of five. Well, I'll tell you what, thank you for showing me the future. It's truly been a gas. It's a, this is an amazing vehicle, it's an amazing system, and I do feel that I'm in the future right now, that it's already arrived. Yeah, it's, uh, we don't have to go back to the future. The future's here right now. I know. <laughs> so, well, I guess we're uh, done for the day, huh? Drive off into the sunset. Happy trails. <laughs>
Well, I wouldn't recommend this with any other vehicle except for a hydrogen car. But it's just water. Salute. <coughs> no, it's good. <laughs> it's got a very neutral flavor to it. It's kind of bland, not very spicy at all. And that's what came out of the tailpipe. Imagine that. Welcome to the future.